All right, folks, we've got to talk about the Lincoln Project because they have been getting under my skin. I think namely because nobody in mainstream media is doing their job, nobody is challenging them. And as a result, all of their careers have been rehabilitated. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure that most of you who are watching this already know, the Lincoln Project is a super PAC that was created by ex-Bush administration officials, and these are right-wing grifters. They are profiting off of the anti-Trump grift. They are much like um, Anna Navarro on CNN, basically. They became famous for hating Donald Trump, even though they're conservative. So we're supposed to think that they're inherently good because they don't like Donald Trump. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then the bar is much more lower than I had already thought. But the reason why they're getting so much praise is because liberal networks like MSNBC are praising them, giving them falling coverage for doing the bare minimum, being anti-Trump. And it's gotten so bad that normies are now starting to buy into this grift. I see people in my own social circles who are centrists and liberals praise the Lincoln Project and talk about how wonderful their ads are and that they've been a bright spot of the 2020 election and that they sure do know how to clap back on Donald Trump and own him. This is going to make me lose my mind. We should not be rewarding people who are lucky to not be in jail right now because of the roles that they played in Bush's administration. I mean, I shouldn't be shocked by this because mainstream media has already rehabilitated George W. Bush. He should be in prison right now. So, of course, you know, they're going to rehabilitate the Lincoln Project. But the reason why so many people um, are buying into the Lincoln Project's grift is because the mainstream media has not chosen to hold them accountable. The only mainstream clip that I've seen where the Lincoln Project is criticized for their role in the Bush administration came from a cartoon. CBS All Access has a show called Tuning Out the News, which is surprisingly good. And they interviewed Rick Wilson, and when they pressed him to explain his role in the Bush administration and how this is a grift, he was speechless. He was visibly irritated by that. Now, I can't play the clip for you because if I do, CBS will copyright claim this video, even if it's fair use. Uh, so I'll link it down below. But the point is, they haven't been held to account, which is why so many people think they must be allies, right? Um, except, finally, in an interview with 60 Minutes, grifters at the Lincoln Project were asked about their role in crafting the current Republican Party. Because here's the thing, like, they can denounce Donald Trump all they want and hate Donald Trump, but they're part of the reason why the Republican Party is so extreme. These are the people who brought us Sarah Palin. These are the people who pushed the Republican Party to use less dog whistles and to be more explicit in embracing xenophobia and racism. So for them to claim the moral high ground and attack Donald Trump for things that they've previously done, I mean, if you've had a genuine change of heart, that'd be one thing, but we know what this is about. This is a grift. They're running a super PAC because they want to make money. They want to profit off of anti-Trump hysteria. And I get it, Trump is bad, but that doesn't mean we, we rehabilitate horrible people like the grifters over at the Lincoln Project. So I can't play the clip for you because this is a CBS clip, but I do have the audio for you where uh, she asks them about their role in the current Republican Party. And of course, they divert attention away from their culpability and wrongdoing and they try to deflect. Um, this is infuriating to watch. Nonetheless, take a look and then we'll discuss it a little bit more when we come back. And I'm going to quote, they're failed strategists who are doing this for the money. The easiest way in the world for a Republican strategist to make money right now is to shut up and say nice things about Donald Trump. So clearly we're in the wrong line of work. But they've also drawn fire from some on the left for their own role in creating the Republican politics they now decry. Do you bear any responsibility, you personally, for bringing the country to where it is? When I look at the party and I see what it's become, I think that I was naive about how deeply embedded the racism issue was in the party. Do you feel at all that you're making amends? And in all politics, you can look back on things with, uh, with honor or regret or what have you. I think I'll look back on this. I think all of us will look back on this as something we did in the cause of the country. So that was infuriating to watch because um, they're lying. I mean, first of all, credit to 60 Minutes for even pressing them on this. I certainly would have pressed them a little bit harder, but they're lying. They're trying to make it seem as if this isn't a grift when this is nothing more than a grift. They would be on the Trump train if 
that would yield them more money. Uh, Rick Wilson said the easiest way in the world for a Republican strategist to make money right now is to shut up and say nice things about Donald Trump. So clearly we're in the wrong line of work. Oh, it's not a grift. If we were grifting, if we wanted to make money, we'd be pro-Trump strategists. Except, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. We all know that the way to make money currently is to be a former Republican who hates Donald Trump. Because that is an open invitation now for you to go on every single mainstream media program to be interviewed about why you hate Donald Trump. That generates interest in why you decided to change and have this ideological shift, and then you get a book deal. Ask uh, Omarosa about this. Ask Anthony Scaramucci about this. Ask any other Republican who all of a sudden had this change of heart and doesn't like Donald Trump. I mean, you don't even have to be a former Bush-era Republican to jump on this anti-Trump grift. You can be from Trump's administration and then become anti-Trump and then make money off of it. The anti-Trump grift is very lucrative. So they know exactly what they're doing. So for him to lie and say, oh, we just, we'd be pro-Republican if we really wanted to make money, nobody believes you. Now, Steve Schmidt said, uh, when asked if they bear any responsibility for the current state of the Republican Party, which they do, but basically he says no. He says, when I look at the party and see what it's become, I think I was naive about how deeply embedded the racism issue was in the party. Is that so? You were naive about how racist the Republican Party was. Is this the same party who, during Hurricane Katrina, Bush did fuck all to help out people, mostly black people, who were drowning? Is this the same party who did push polling back in uh, the 2000 Republican primaries to use racism against their own people? I mean, Bush literally push polled against McCain and asked Republican Party primary voters whether or not they would feel more or less inclined to vote for John McCain if he had an illegitimate black son. Like this party, their forte has been racist dog whistles for decades now. They've been preying on America's xenophobia and racism, and all of a sudden, you're going to claim that you were naive? I mean, you don't even have to look at the former presidents that the Republican Party has produced, but look at who's risen to prominence. <laughs> You're full of shit. You're full of shit. Um, now, they're lying, and we have receipts to prove that they're lying, because this Twitter account shows that at least Rick Wilson isn't some exception to the Republican Party's terrible behavior. They are as bad as the average Republican is. So here he is responding to a tweet about anti-abortion propaganda, suggesting that he'd probably be even more authoritarian than Donald Trump. Here he is saying, I don't care what flavor of Islam these dicks are, the flavor they need to be is bleeding out of a hole in their temple, literally calling for Muslims to be killed. Uh, he also implied that families of victims of the Newtown shooting are crisis actors, and there's a lot more where that came from. These people are not good people. These people are part of the reason why the modern Republican Party is so insane, why they're a death cult now. And the worst part is the fact that they helped send us to war in Iraq. And I think that David Sirota put it best in this concise tweet. I helped start the Iraq war and turn the Supreme Court into a rubber stamp crushing millions of workers. But here's my Lincoln Project video of Trump farting with Curb Your Enthusiasm music. So please send me 50 million and make me an MSNBC pundit on Brian Williams' show. That's exactly it. And then the media does just that, gives them a pass. And that's deeply, deeply frustrating. At the rate we're going, I would expect Donald Trump to be fully rehabilitated, like within uh, two years after he's out of office, because we saw how quickly the media flipped their tune, uh, Rachel Maddow at least, when uh, they found out that he got COVID-19. All of a sudden, you know, we're praying for the president. We, uh, we totally are wishing you well, Mr. President. You're a fighter. I mean, <laughs> look, if you actually want the Republican Party to not be this fucking insane, and I'm talking to the media pundits who definitely watch this program, stop rehabilitating Bush-era war criminals. Actually draw a line and have some fucking standards, more so than just, oh, they're anti-Trump, so they're friends. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. No, that's not how it works in actuality. The enemy of your enemy is a grifter, who is allowing rubes to send them money, who are liberals, who are anti-Republican, all because they're preying on anti-Trump hysteria. 
I mean, this just makes me lose faith in humanity that people fall for it, but I think that a lot of people genuinely don't know about how nefarious the Lincoln Project is, but because there's so much people who don't know about how terrible they are, it's, you know, incumbent on me and people like me with a platform to let people know these are not individuals who are to be trusted, and I could see them trying to butter up Biden in order to weasel their way into his administration to turn this grift into a long-term opportunity to do even more terrible policies, to influence Joe Biden to do uh, more shitty things that we don't like, to make uh, the Democratic Party the Republican Party of the 2000s since the modern-day Republican Party is basically full-on authoritarian and fascist. I mean, we can't let that happen, so we've got to sound the alarm and let people know these folks aren't to be trusted. These are grifters, and they don't care about you. They don't care about the country. They're not even anti-Trump. They're just taking a particular position because it's lucrative for them to do so. This is all about self-aggrandizement. This is all about them making a lot of money and getting a lot of attention and uh, probably getting a book deal after this, if not a job in Biden's administration. So don't trust them. And whenever you see someone praising the Lincoln Project, make sure that you let them know these people are bad people. They are the reason why we have a Donald Trump today. Beta. 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 Beta.